2016 Razor Blade Stealth. This will be the first startup. I've already done an unboxing video, which I've uploaded to YouTube. You're more than welcome to check that out. Here's the unit. Okay. It's already been charged for three hours, which is the recommended first charge before you turn it on. Keys have lit up, razor green. So this is a, a Duo Core i7 with hyper threading, so four virtual cores, eight gigabytes of RAM. I've opted for the 256 gig PCI SSD. Um, I'm not sure you can tell, but there is absolutely no sound whatsoever coming from the computer, not from the fans. It's actually taken a fair while. <clears throat> it's cycling through the different colors by the looks of things. Um, I've got one of the Chroma keyboards. I'm pretty happy with it. So it'd be good to sync up um, the color selections for your keys. If you uh, play MMOs or RPGs or whatever game you play. Razer sells a, a Mamba, I think it's called, M-A-M-B-A, -A, Mamba mouse that you can use. It's um, wired and wireless, so if you opt to use the Razer Core with your Razer Stealth, you could always leave the cable connected to the Razer Core, so when you're at home and you're gaming, you can hook up your mouse and play as per normal, and while you're out and about, you can actually disconnect the mouse and use it wirelessly with your laptop. We've got our cursor. We had our cursor. Looks like it's doing something. Then again, this is a first boot, so for all we know, it might never start. I can't remember how long it took for the first boot on a MacBook Air, but I do know with Apple, you get quite a nice introduction Anyway, while looking at the unit, you've got your webcam in the middle. Um, I'm fairly confident that's a light sensor next to it. And on either side, you've actually got two microphones, not just the one microphone, which is a little bit different. Um, again, the speakers are on the sides of the keyboard. I haven't heard them yet. They're supposed to be quite good. Um, fairly substantial speakers for an Ultrabook. Now it's been confirmed in America that you can actually increase the amount of, or increase the hard drive capacity. You can swap out your hard drives. Um, a couple of people have used other Samsung drives. Obviously, I can't recommend it because you'll void your warranty once you open up the computer but it is doable. It's obviously a lot cheaper to buy your own hard drive and install that than it is to upgrade to the 256 or the 512 that Razer offers from their store. While charging this unit, uh, there's no light that actually comes on on the computer. There is a light next to the charging port, I believe. There's a light somewhere. The light stays off unless the battery reaches 10% or less, in which case I believe it shines red. And when you get to 3% or less, uh, the image from the startup book actually suggests that it might be a combination of red and green shining through the same light but we won't be seeing that today 
I opted for the Quad HD screen because reviews suggested the Ultra HD screen was only good for about three hours or so, three and a half hours. Um, I intend to use this Ultrabook connected to my mobile phone's 4G. I uh, can only imagine that it'll drain the battery a lot faster, so I'm hoping to get at least seven hours out of it. Um, casual use, I suppose. You've probably noticed it's taken a lot longer than I would have expected. I'm sure though, once it's all set up and running, the PCI SSD would allow the computer to start up incredibly quickly. Should be getting speeds of about 1500 megabytes per second read and write. Um, your standard SSDs, your Samsungs, your Crucial M5s, uh, SSDs like that, you'd be getting around 400 to maybe 600 megs per second, being a PCI e-card or a PCI SSD. Being a PCI SSD, it should offer much faster speeds. Looks like something's happening. Again, I still can't hear the fan running whatsoever. The screen is completely black, but the keys are still cycling. They're actually cycling a bit faster than they were before. So hopefully something's happening. There's your light on the front of the unit. This light up here is just a reflection. Ignore that. This one down here is actually part of the computer. It's a shame they can't do some sort of lighting with the space bar or maybe even the trackpad. I'll be creating another video later on today or tomorrow. Uh, just giving a little um, walk around on the computer, giving my opinion of the way it's running at that point, quality of the case, quality of the keys, quality of the speakers, that sort of thing. Um, even a review on the bundled software. And once the Razer Core arrives in Australia, I hope to pick one up. If they're not too crazily priced, I'll give a review of that as well. The Razer Core is a a laptop dock that you can hook up to a monitor, to your peripherals, your keyboards, your mice or whatnot. Uh, it allows you to use your laptop while you're at home without having to reconnect everything. You just use the USB slash Thunderbolt port on the side of the unit. USB-C, I believe it's called. So one connection that'll both power up the laptop and charge it um, while giving use of all of your peripherals the port's capable of about 40 gigabytes per second. Um, so that's why it's able to do so much with the one port, it's very high speed. The Razer Core also houses or is able to house a desktop graphics card. Uh, most desktop graphics cards would be the right size to fit in there. It does have some restriction to its size, but it should be fine for the likes of, you know, an ASUS GDX 970, 980. Uh, there's some recommended cards on their website, on the Razer website already. I'm hoping that it's backwards compatible because I actually have a, a 670 I'd like to use in it. Having a graphics card in the Razer Core allows you desktop graphics when your laptop's connected to it, um, whether you're gaming on a laptop screen or an external monitor. Um, so you should be able to play some ultra high settings on quite a few games with a decent graphics card because this computer as it is is very capable, um, just not in the graphics department.
I'll run a gaming test later on to see what it's capable of. I hope to play League of Legends at 1080p resolution at 60 frames and we'll see what kind of settings we can get with that. The screen's actually capable of 2560 by 1440 resolution, although I'm not hopeful that I'll be able to play League even on low settings at that resolution, but I'll certainly give it a go. That's just another reason why I haven't opted for the Ultra HD screen. Uh, it's just a bigger restriction on the sorts of things you can do with the computer. Is it just my eyes or did the screen go darker? There you go. The screen did get a little bit darker. I thought maybe I was just losing my mind. Um, could have just been a, sort of a screensaver while it's loading. The trackpad can only be clicked in the bottom half, left and right click. Um, I'm sure you can probably program some functions into it. Uh, yeah, but so far you can't click the top of the unit. You'll never be able to click the top here, but you might be able to program sensitivity, um, whether it's a touch click or an actual press click. Being a razor, I imagine there's a lot of configurations you can play with. This has become quite a long process. Still just waiting for this to boot up. The grips under the unit, the rubber grips are quite good. It's quite difficult to even slide the computer either direction, which is good. I can accidentally knock it off the table. Um, I've picked up a laptop sleeve today for a 12 inch computer. This is a 12 and a half inch computer. I thought there might be a little bit of play in it and it might be a nice snug fit. I was so very wrong. It's easily a centimeter too small to fit. The sleeve that is too small to fit onto the laptop. I'm not bothered at all by the thick bevel around the screen, which was in a few other reviews I read. Uh, at the end of the day, if the screen came all the way to the edges, it would sit on top of the speakers. Uh, so this gives it a little bit of a uniformed look with the edges of your keyboard. No. So there was nothing in the book telling me how long the first startup would take. Uh, so far, I'm not particularly impressed. Surely it's going to start up any second now. This is definitely cutting into some precious lead time. The Razer Health is not a gaming laptop on its own. Uh, it's simply not spec'd out for gaming. The Intel 520 graphics, which is integrated graphics into the CPU, is quite good. Uh, you should be able to run most games at 1920 by 1080 resolution um, whether it's in low or high settings of course will depend on the game i'd say most of them will be low or very low settings especially some later games <clears throat> but as for applications and programs i think this will be more than capable ultrabooks tend to use power saving CPUs uh, which is a good thing computers that only last an hour or two can be fairly useless on the go as you can imagine so the CPUs are different from desktop CPUs the Intel 520 integrated graphics has a dedicated 1024 megabyte graphics. Uh, the computer should be more than capable of running three screens at once. Again, not gaming on three screens, obviously, um, but extending your desktop, for example, over three screens. And with the eight gigabytes of included RAM, that's more than enough to run 
multiple applications at once on the one screen or on all three screens. Uh, this lot of Intel CPUs is perfectly capable of running a 4K screen, uh, perhaps multiple. I don't have multiple 4K screens to demonstrate, but I'm more than happy to demonstrate in a later video uh, if it's capable of connecting to another 1920 by 1080 screen or perhaps a 4K TV. It can certainly output 4K video at 24 hertz, which is the standard for your 4K movies and Blu-rays, things like that. You would have noticed this computer doesn't have any CD drives. It's simply got the super speed USB 3 ports, the lightning and USB-C port for charging and docking. You've got the lock on the side. I believe it's fully compatible with like Kensington locks and things like that. Personally, I've never used a laptop lock before, so I don't know much about them. And again, a super speed USB 3 port and a full-sized HDMI, which is quite nice. I'm not a big fan whatsoever of miniature ports. I find them quite annoying. You can see the keys are raised a little bit. You've got a few millimeters of play, maybe three or four millimeters. And um, they've got a nice feel to them, which is good. Uh, I think the speaker grills look quite good down the sides. I'm fairly impressed by how sleek the unit is. Even the hinge looks really good. See the power key. The whole unit is actually black. It does look a little bit grey on the camera. So we've been waiting over 20 minutes for this computer to start. So I'm going to shut this video down. When it does begin to boot, I'll start recording again and I'll keep you guys filled in.